So let's write a different function to produce a different set of images. So here you see two formulas, slightly different, that produce two images, slightly different. So these are images of a small dog on top of a cat, but the dog's location is a little different. Okay, so the first dog is at x50 and y40, and the second dog is at x50 and y60. So in general, you might want a picture of a cat with a dog in it, and the dog might be at any location. You might want to uh, move the dog all over the cat picture. And it will be inconvenient to have to write this long formula or something similar to it every time we want such a picture. So let's define another function. Again, left paren, and then the word define, and then because we are defining a function, not a constant or variable, another left paren, and then the name of the function, let's say uh, place dog might be a good name. This time we want to be able to put the dog anywhere on top of the cat. So we we'll actually need two inputs to this function, one for the x and one for the y coordinate. So let's call the first input x and the second input y. And finally, the right paren to indicate that we're done with the names of the inputs. And now let's write the body of the function. Let's define what place dog should produce. We can use the place image operation to put the small dog at a location that is determined by our input. So instead of 50, 40, or 50, 60, let's just put x and y. And then the fourth input to place image is still cat. So that's the body of the function. And we need another right paren in order to close the definition. It's also nice to write a signature for this function. So let's do that. Place dog is a function that takes two numbers as input, x and y, and returns an image. OK, so that's a very useful function. Let's start to use it instead of placing a small dog using place image, we could use place dog, and that's much shorter. We can just say place dog 5040, and we get a dog on cat image right away. So these are the same two images that we produced before, but now more concisely. And it also gives us a power of placing dogs in other places, like here's another um, image with the same dog placed on the same cat, but in a different location. Um, here is another location. Oh, I guess this one, the dog went out of bounds, so it's kind of hard to see. Let's move it a little bit up. We can experiment. OK. So one thing that's new about this function compared to the previous one is that the function takes two inputs. But as you can see, that's not really any different. We can just put both inputs names in the first piece of information we give to define, and then we could feel free to use either, both, or even neither of these inputs in the body of the function. I want to emphasize that the new functions we just defined are also operations that our functions can use. So for example, suppose that we don't just want a picture of a dog on a cat. We want the picture of a dog on a cat saying, dog, let's say. That means we could change this function definition of place dog that we just defined so that instead of placing a small dog on the image cat, we could place a small dog on a different image, an image of a cat saying dog. That will be this image. So what I just did is to use the function cat says in the function place dog. And that means that Every time I use place dog from now on, it's going to be placing the dog on an image of a cat saying dog. Something else that we can do using the place dog function that we just defined is, let's say that we often want to use the place dog function where the x and the y are the same number. So 50, 50, 100, 100, and so on. Well, we could define a function to do that. So let's define this function, left paren define, left paren. Um, one name for this function might be diagonal dog. 
And this time, let's say that we only take one input, which is both the x and the y we want. Uh, let me call it n for number, perhaps. Okay. And this new function diagonal dog can be defined using a body that uses the function that we just defined, place dog. And we are not limited to using the input n once. We could use the input n twice in the body, once for x and once for y. So that's how we use place dog. And finally, we need a right parent to close this function definition. Again, it's nice to clarify what this function does by writing a signature for it. Diagonal dog is the name of a function that takes a single number as input and returns an image. The single number is called n. And now we could use the diagonal dog function to produce these images. By the way, the orange black highlighting that you're seeing is because the computer is concerned that we haven't used the function yet. We're going to be talking about using and testing functions very soon.